All right. We're live. How you doing tonight, man? I am doing pretty good. Pretty good. How about you? I'm doing great. Doing great. I see that we have uh, Carnivore and 24 in the chat and we have yep. Rick in the chat. Uh, Carnivore and 24, I did a live stream with him last night. He's uh, Blake. He's awesome. I'm having a barbecue meetup coming up uh, in a couple weeks and he's actually coming to it. I want, I, you know, I really wanted to go to that, but it's, it's hop on a plane, away. man. <laughs> uh, we need to do like, we need to do like a carnivore community meetup in like somewhere that's like centrally located because like yeah that, lives, I'll, I'll be good with that. In the midwest or like the south for the most part so mm -hmm. like we need to do one like i don't know in like tennessee or like something like that that'd be fun yeah and, and blake would like that because he's uh he i think he lives in tennessee so he'd be cool with that yeah, and uh, yeah. Yeah, the they have the like the big events like the the it, now it's called Healthier Hat or Hack Your Health in te Texas mm -hmm. and different things like that. But um, I mean, that's just I mean that don't work for people that live way farther up north and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, a lot of people live either in the southeast or the Midwest areas. I know, like Sean lives in uh, what South Carolina? Yeah, I believe South. Carolina. Yeah, he lives in South Carolina, and um, yeah. that's where Larry and Cassie and all them live at too. We yeah. had a um, we had a meetup uh, up there last year in September, and it was awesome at like a state park up there. We had a great time. Nice. All right, people are coming in. All right, hit the like hey. button. Y'all get in here. Yeah. Help us out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So Carnivore24, um, I've been seeing your videos. I've been checking them out, and you're doing really good. Um, good uh, he's going to keep growing because he's yeah, doing really yeah. good. I can tell he can yeah. edit too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say good content and also like um, good job on the journey so far. You're, you're doing well. So, okay. We got Jordan. Shout out for dropping that weight. Got me inspired. Two hundred pounds. Five seven. Want to get down to one fifty one sixty? Awesome. You can do it. That's carnivore is the way to do it for sure. Uh, you can definitely do it. And so I was good. just telling. I was just telling you before we hit live that, that part of the reason that I thought that you you did so well last year dropping all that weight is because you were super strict. Like yep. you stuck with the plan and see me, I was an idiot. I went off plan multiple <laughs> times and like yeah. I let the holidays get the best of me and just the, those old cravings and all that stuff. And it really slowed things down. And you're a prime mm -hmm. example. Whenever you can stick to the plan, like, I mean, it works. That's like Sean, the intentional carnivore. Yeah. He lost like almost like 300 pounds, I believe. But he was yeah. very consistent and stuck with his plan. And hey, mm -hmm. the proof's in the pudding. Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely is. You know, it's it, consistency is key, and you know, staying on plan. You know, not having cheats. Like I would, um, for Thanksgiving, my cheat was green bean casserole, which was made with bacon and and <laughs> green beans and cream cheese. And, and you felt like you were doing something, didn't you? Yeah, I thought this is cheating, you know. But it's like it, it was, you know, it's. <laughs> So it, you just gotta, just you gotta not let your let your world revolve around food. You know that's the biggest thing is, is change your mindset around food. You know that's 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 the hardest thing because food addiction is real. You know it's tough. So especially yeah. when you're eating so you know, when you're a sugar addict or a carb addict, like you know we all are, and yeah you know, we got to be you know so big because of that. So it's yeah, just you gotta have a lot of mind games. You know. It's all yeah. mind over matter. So I noticed that um, I had issues with like whenever I would forget to meal prep, like on Sunday before I go back to work on Monday or something. <clears throat> when I forget to meal prep, like I'd, I'd be like, okay, I'm going to get some bunless hamburgers or something. But then like every now and then I'd be like, I really don't want a hunless, bunless hamburger from like McDonald's today. And then I would start playing mind games with myself. Oh, so just go eat this junk food instead. And yeah. I'm like, 
I know that it's like you got to fight through those urges and win those battles. Mm-hmm. But man, I, I let it get me down at multiple times last year, for sure. Yeah, for sure. You, you gotta, you got, you just gotta stay consistent. That's the thing. And like with meal prepping, um, you know, when I started, I was doing three meals a day. But once I, after a month, I started doing two meals a day, and I would always just eat like six eggs for lunch for, for the most part. So I would just make some eggs real quick at night in the fridge and i have this like uh you probably have a microwave but i'm working on the road so i have like mm-hmm. a plug-in uh like hot plate you plug in your cigarette light in your truck or whatever and it heats up those eggs uh, sometimes i, would I do remember like, watching a video where you were doing yeah. that i think yeah and then uh i would do uh i would grill up like some chicken legs for the week for lunches and um it, meal prep is a big part of it too you got to really be intentional about you know making sure you stay on plan when you're at work and for lunch and everything, you know? So, um, yeah. And I have no excuse when it comes to that. Cause I got multiple smokers and I love to smoke and meat and everything. So I can, it's nothing to cook up some brisket and have brisket all week, but just gotta, when you let things get in the way, that's whenever I, I notice. And also just, man, sometimes cause I live in a small town and there's not a lot of like chain restaurants, but mm-hmm. I catch myself when I go to the, like what I consider the big city, which most people would laugh at and be like, dude, that ain't a big city. But to me, I'm like, whenever What's I see city? someone, to me, when a big city is like, if it's got more than 20,000 people, that's huge to me. <laughs> and, <laughs> like, but, uh, and, but if I go to a place that like, if they have, if they have like, chain restaurants and and like uh, longhorns and all that other different stuff like that's a big town in my eyes Mm -hmm. and so uh whenever i would go somewhere and i would see all those signs and stuff it would start i would remember like man remember when i used to go and eat there remember that meal that i got there and i would look at the signs and stuff and that stuff would just throw a kink in things and Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a lot of stuff that i even still to this day, still have to work through some of that stuff because uh, it's tough sometimes. Yeah, yeah, I understand that completely. Um, how mm-hmm. many people? What's the population of your town? Just curious. Well, it, I don't think that I don't think the population's accurate. But I, hold on, let me look real quick just to make <laughs> sure that I get it right. But it doesn't feel like there's as many people in this town. Uh, population 8,000 people okay but and that's like and when I say that that's the town of Atmore because I don't care Mm -hmm. if people know where I live that town is called Atmore and the population is 8,500 but I actually live in a smaller town outside of Atmore that that's like 10 or 15 minutes from Atmore and Mm -hmm. in the town that I live in there ain't but one red light in the whole town and like we, I mean, we, I mean, we don't even have, we just got Walmart and Atmore like a couple years ago. And okay. uh, we, we, we just got like the Dollar General and like McDonald's and Taco Bell and stuff. Yeah. So we, I guess uh, we're moving up in the world. <laughs> we live, we live in Nebraska. So like here it's all like nothing but like soybean farms and corn cornfields mm-hmm. and um we our town has 1200 people that's our population wow. is yeah. that and, <laughs> yeah that's crazy that's even smaller than than yeah. like at more but like i said i'm it, the zip code would be at more but really i don't live in at more you know what i mean yep. where i live yep. that's mm-hmm. a lot smaller so i see a question here i was gonna click that up here for us What's your opinion on intermittent fasting? Also, did you see the new article posted from the American Heart Association? I did not see any articles from them, um, but my opinion on intermittent fasting is it's definitely beneficial um, for sure. Um, I currently am doing OMAD. I've been doing OMAD now for about two months, just trying to get to my goals. Um, and for most of my journey, I was two meals a day. Um, and I know there's a lot of good benefits to come with intermittent fasting, like your body uses that extra body fat for the fuel, um, to give you the energy. Um, and also it's great for autophagy and things like that. And, and cell reproduct, like cell, um, cell regeneration. I think that's what it's called. Um, but there's a lot of great, uh, benefits to intermittent fasting. And also you keep your blood sugar levels stable. You don't have a spiking insulin all the time. So the later you can, the longer you can fast, the better off you'll be in the end, um, for your 
insulin sensitivity, your overall metabolic health, and everything else. Um, what about you, Kip? Brother, you nailed that like a doctor. You sound <laughs> like Dr. Barry when you said that. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing a lot of uh, – the last few months, I've been doing a ton of like research about mm-hmm. – metabolic health and insulin sensitivity and and like uh cholesterol and lean mass hyperspires because it's it's becoming a real thing you know i you know i'm living it <laughs> you know what i mean so um yeah. i've been doing a lot of research let's do a lot of um videos from dr barry and dr obedia all bickman chafee all of them so yeah um, and what i've noticed too with when it comes to the intermittent fasting or whatever a lot of times whenever people ask me about carnivore, like I didn't in the beginning, I didn't tell them, Hey, yeah, yeah, you got to go do it. You got to go do it. A lot of people start doing it naturally. A lot of people will just start cutting back from three meals to one, two meals. And then some people just start cutting back to one meal on their own, just because they're, they're eating such great nutritious food that like, they're not feeling like they need to eat as many times in the day. And, and, and I haven't experimented a lot with like the longer extended fasts, but at some point I'm thinking I might want to try it. Cause I do from the research that I've done, there's definitely benefits uh, to doing it. Yeah. I, I haven't done a long extended fast yet either. And I know there's benefits of it and maybe one day I'll try it. But for now I'm just sticking to OMAD cause I'm, I feel pretty good on OMAD. So, All right, so, uh, so you're, you're doing like a two week challenge, n- no food. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, I think this was, I think <laughs> they commented after that about um, what the, I guess the American Heart Association said, eight hour time restricted eating linked to a 91% risk. I don't agree with that. I don't know because, about that. Um, at the end of the day, I haven't heard that, but um, I need to look at the article. But at the end of the day, um, I look at cardiovascular disease is more of a metabolic disease in the end at the end of the day um you, people who are more insulin resistant have high risk of cardio, cardio cardiovascular disease also if you're obese or overweight or all that other stuff um insulin resistance is a big factor in that and if you're intermittent fasting and you're prolonging your fasting period and shortening your eating window your insulin levels and your blood sugar is going to be stable and not so up and down. So I feel like intermittent fasting is actually decreasing your risk of cardiovascular disease in the end. So that's just my opinion. I'm not a mm-hmm. doctor. I'm just the dude who's been eating meat for a year. So I don't know. Yeah, and, <laughs> and the way I think a, a simple way for me to just think about it in my simple little mind is like, if you think about our ancestors and stuff like that, a lot of them, they didn't, cause a lot of doctors are like, Oh, you need, you don't need to just eat three meals a day. You need to eat five or six times a day. And you yeah. know what I'm talking about? And they'll say like to regulate your blood sugar and all this other different stuff. And they're creating all those different spikes. But I mean, mm-hmm. if you think about our ancestors, they probably didn't do all that stuff. Like they were lucky if they even got a meal that day. Like a yep. lot of them would work, work, work all through the day and hunt and different stuff like that. And if they were lucky, they got home and they had food that night. And if they mm-hmm. weren't lucky, then they had to try again the next day. So there was a whole lot of fasting going on back then, I'm sure. And and not all of it was fasting that they wanted to do, but they didn't have a choice. But yep. nowadays people feel like unless you just eat tons and tons of meals or whatever, all throughout the day that you're going to have all these problems. I'm like, oh, yeah. that won't make sense. I, and especially if you're eating, you know, a ton of carbs and, and fruit and, and sugar and everything else. I mean, you're, if you're eating several times throughout the day, that's how many spikes in your blood sugar and your insulin are you getting throughout the day? You know what I mean? So like, yeah. I, f- I feel like that's just causing people to become more insulin resistant um and they'll tell you to eat six times a day yeah it's crazy and and like look look at the the epidemic we have in our country like what 80 i think it was 82 percent or something of of adults in the u.s are overweight or and then 40 47 percent 45 percent something like that are obese um which is crazy so like i what they've been telling us has not been working that's all i'm saying you know yeah, I had a doctor one time. I remember now that you was bringing that up. I had a doctor one time that was telling me that we're like cows. We're supposed to be grazers. And I'm just like, so I'm just supposed to be walking around eating all day. 
And I'm just like, <laughs> like that, it, just don't, it don't make sense. If I was supposed to be like a cow, I mean, I'd be out in the pasture. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, Grass. But like, <laughs> that's, the way, that's the way they are. <laughs> oh, man. Let's but see. What was you about to say? <laughs> I was just going to highlight this here. Uh, for Oaktown Girl, four months carnivore and health is so much better. Awesome. Um, you start to see a lot of great benefits after that 90 days, but I mean, four months, that's amazing. You're, you're definitely getting some much better health, much better metabolic health after four months for sure. Um, oh, here's a good one. Uh, Jordan Taylor, over the road car hauler. Definitely can relate to being on the road. So much junk food at truck stops. Yes, you got to like, and, and you, you got to stop and gas up. Great time to get some water. <laughs> and uh so or some so, sparkling water yeah yeah that'll work um and uh try to find cl like clean beef jerky that's a good snack for on the road um but just i would say go to go to the grocery store and get get food that you, real food just avoid going to gas stations if you can yeah um, in a pinch i'll get like the the hot dogs or whatever, but I still feel like that's not as good for you as even though it is meat and everything because of the process and everything, mm -hmm. it still is not going to be as good for you as eating like hamburgers or like a steak or something. Yep. Uh, agreed. hundred percent, hundred percent. And, uh, you can meal prep. Um, if you don't have a way to heat, cook food on your truck, you can meal prep things, get, uh, I guess talking about the hot logic, uh, plug in hot plate for your, uh, truck, plug your cigarette lighter, or you can do like boiled eggs, bacon. Um, you can pre-cook bacon. You can do, um, clean meat sticks like chomps or paleo Valley or Archer. Um, there's lots of things you pork rinds, You can do those. Um, a lot of things you can do, um, I've been liking the Chomps meat sticks recently. I've been yeah. uh, trying them, and they're pretty good. Oh yeah, they're they're yeah. awesome. I, but I, I ate like three of the big ones one time. The uh, it wasn't the regular ones; it was the habanero ones. Oh, I, okay. ate, I I well, I I used to eat a lot of hot food, okay, but I mm -hmm. ate three of them. And let me tell you what, boy. <laughs> you pay for it the next day? <laughs> but, and it wasn't even the next day. It was about 30 minutes later. <laughs> oh, it took me to the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> it was them habanero ones. They got me. <laughs> oh, I See, I love hot stuff. Like, I've, I've always been, like, a spicy guy. Me too. And, uh, so, I... Yeah, I'll even eat. I'll still eat pepper jack cheese sometimes. I know it's not carnivore, but whatever. It's it's yeah. it is what it is. <laughs> it's such a small amount of a veggie, but you, yep. you be careful who you tell that though. Some people get mad if they find out you had a little bit of pepper. <laughs> mm -hmm. no, I know, right? Yeah. Oh, I, I've gotten comments about like um, because I put black pepper on like my eggs. They say, "Oh, black pepper has oxalates." I'm like, who cares? It's it doesn't yeah. bother me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> here's a good one. Ma Ross been doing karma for almost one year. My husband lost 30 and has been stalled at 300 pounds for the last six months. He does drink diet soda. Other than that, eggs, beef, and butter. Um, well, good job on the the 30 pounds. That's that's better than nothing. That's that's really good. Um, I would say if you're stalling out at 300 pounds, um you stop the diet soda like you got to stop those artificial yeah, you soda. gotta find something you gotta like you gotta drink is he seven foot tall because i wish i knew how tall he was <laughs> yeah right <laughs> um how much are you eating because if you're eating like i know it's hard to overeat on eggs beef and butter but if you have a if you you're eating too many calories and not moving enough you're gonna stall out like at the end of the day calories are still a thing you know, I, now I'm getting leaner and leaner. I'm counting my calories. And the only way I'm able to continue to lose body fat is to be restricting my calories and doing OMAD. So um, when you're 300 pounds, you may not, but if you're eating like, you know, four pounds of beef a day, that's probably too much. Um, oh, I, yeah, I unless know. you're staying in the gym. Yeah, unless you're like <laughs> super active. Um, <laughs> like you're working, you know, two days plus 20,000 steps, you know what I mean? Or whatever. But <laughs> I would just uh, cut out, um, 
cut out the dairy too. If you too like if you're eating cheese or milk or cream, I would try to eliminate that too because that would cause you to stall out as well. So that's the biggest culprit for me is the dairy, like the cheese and all that stuff. Yeah. That stuff will put a it will make me not lose a an ounce. If I'm eating <laughs> cheese, I can't lose an ounce. So how so, much so so here's the question. When you're eating cheese, because I know you stalled out because you got back in eating cheese not too long ago. Mm-hmm. When you're when you're eating cheese, how much were you eating? Was it like a lot or just yeah? Like it was slice? more than I. I, mean, I can't eat a little bit of cheese, man. Oh, okay. <laughs> when, I eat cheese, like, cheese. I'm, when I eat a little bit of cheese, I'm like a rat. I just go to town on it. <laughs> you just sit there and eat like a half a block, you know. <laughs> No, yeah, oh, well, really? not quite, but I mean, I just when I eat cheese, I mean, I I enjoy it. But the thing is, it just it, I start gaining weight whenever I start eating it, and and a lot of it could be the amount. But like, I don't know the point in having just a little bit of cheese because just a little bit of cheese that that flavor is going to tempt me to mm-hmm. want even more. So it's almost better for me to just not have it all together. Yep. Kind of like yeah, I mean. Even though it's not at bad like a like a cigarette, but if I was trying mm-hmm. to not smoke cigarettes, I ain't gonna just smoke one. Because if I'm gonna smoke exactly. one, then I'm gonna fire up a bunch of them. Yeah, and you know some people can moderate cheese. Like I can moderate cheese, but some some people can't. You know, I um in the beginning I would overeat cheese as well. I would I would eat like way too much cheese. But now um, now that I've kind of I'm far in and I'm kind of got a good grip on things on my food addiction. I can eat. I usually eat a slice of cheese a day, just because it. I want. I crave a little bit of cheese, and that. But that's it. Like I don't need more than that. You know what I mean? So, um, some people can moderate. Some people can't. I. I couldn't moderate in the beginning, but a year later I can. So, um, yeah. yeah that's yeah. just. This is how it, cheese is addictive because it, it. just. I don't know. It's. It's. It's, it's, it's good, good, man. You gotta, you, gotta be <laughs> you gotta be very careful. You can't overdo it. Yeah. And and honestly, like I tell people, like, I'm I'm not saying I'm never going to have cheese again. And I'm not saying that uh, once I hit my goal weights or my goal weight that I won't incorporate it a little bit more. And now, of course, if I start gaining 20 pounds, then I'll quit. But uh, I hope that eventually I can get to a place where I can be around my goal weight and I can have a little bit of cheese and not have issues because I love cheese. But we'll just have to find out. Like if I was where you are right now, and having yeah. cheese and it didn't bother me, then I would just rock on with it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And like, you know, I'm close to my goal. So I I can moderate and I'm not like I'm still there, I'm still not sitting here eating a bunch of carbs or anything. Like I still have I still I'm still carnivore, you know what I mean? But one slice of cheese a day, it, it doesn't bother me. It doesn't yeah, make I, me and want I, to I, more or make me want to go and like have carbs or sugar, you know. So I'm glad you mentioned dairy though, because uh I was watching um, where a post from Larry and Cassie from Carnivore Quest and Cassie had talked about how she had been in a stall for a long time. Forget exactly how long the stall was. and She couldn't figure it out, but it was right in front of her because it was the dairy. She couldn't quit. She was having the heavy cream with her coffee and like cheese and different things like that. But she's been for the past 35 days or whatever. I think she has cut out all dairy completely and all of a sudden now the the weight's just falling off. So, yeah, I think recently, I think this past week, she came out with a video that uh, she actually stopped coffee too. I she's know, been, like, that's amazing. Crazy. She's getting serious. Yeah, she's <laughs> seriously like, I, I mean, I can't do that. I'm still, I still drink my, my black coffee, you know, every, every single day. So that's just, I, I can't, I can't give it up. I, I feel like I've given so many things up Yeah, I got to have, gotta have that coffee you know so uh, do you think that do you think that you'll never be able to give it up or do you just think like it no time soon you might not give it up no time soon i mean you could see it happening eventually maybe yeah but the thing is like it it doesn't cause of severe for me i don't see a reason to stop drinking coffee because um it's 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 caffeine it, I mean, yeah, it helps me wake up, helps me keep me going. How many cups uh, a day are you drinking? Way too many. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <man. laughs> probably, like, probably like six, honestly. Um, but at, at the end of the day, like it hasn't. I mean, I can see one day maybe giving it up for like a month to, just to challenge myself to see if I can do it and see how I feel. Because I do get those crashes, 
And um, I don't know. It's just I've thought about it. But, like, one day we'll see about getting off caffeine. That's what my buddy, the carnivore temporary. trucker, that's what my buddy, the carnivore trucker, would say was whenever he would try to quit coffee because he drives a 18 wheeler for a living, he would feel like like worried for his safety, like he would want to fall asleep and stuff. And that's the reason he just kept drinking it. But I don't know. I'm just the way the way that I am. I hate knowing that I'm dependent on something. So mm -hmm. like it's like mm -hmm. for me, like if 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 I had quit everything else, but I had to hang on to that. I would feel like I have to at some point challenge myself for at least a few weeks just to see if I have the strength to to fight that urge. And you never know. You might you might uh, challenge yourself for two weeks or a month or something, and you might just be like, nah, it wasn't even worth it. I'm going back to coffee. But then again, you might challenge yourself and be like, oh, my gosh, it's the best thing I've ever done. Yeah. And, you know, you're right. It, it's you'll never I know. I, I think I will eventually. Like when I'm, I think I will eventually for sure. Um, I think for me a little bit, being in a little bit of a calorie deficit still, that I'm still don't have, I'm using that coffee to help with the energy. So, but yeah. I also have a relatively active job, so I'm moving quite often. So I don't know. It's just, I think I will eventually challenge myself for about, I probably have 30 days to, to get off coffee, but um, not anytime in the near future but maybe like down the road sometime this year probably but we'll see we'll see it's, it's well, in look, my I look, if it makes you feel any better whenever you do it message me and let me know that you're gonna do it and i'll find something super hard for me that i don't want to <laughs> give up and i'll 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 rough it with you for that month or whatever <laughs> i'll do i'll okay. do that with it All won't right. be coffee though because coffee's not a problem for me i'll just yeah. find something yeah. that i absolutely don't want to give up and i'll give up that for a month yeah yeah okay all right you got <laughs> <All right. laughs> we got a question here from taiba Shal shalmani i don't know if i said that right sorry if i butchered your name um hi all question for both of you and everyone here how do you deal with going repeatedly off plan not becoming a vicious cycle um for me i've only had one cheat meal last year so i don't have a ton of experience with this i know kip <laughs> you can definitely say more of this than i can so well i mean I, i'm not perfect when it comes to this so i'm not sure i'm giving the best answers but i'll say the difference in me from last year because last year man when i would go off plan for uh like a day it would be like after the first or second time it was way more than a day it would be like the full weekend or then it would be a whole week and then eventually it would be like a whole month or two months and i would be way 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 off plan and gain tons of weight so this year i've been trying to make sure that it's less and less and like i've been off plan multiple times where it was just like one meal and I just had that one meal. And honestly, I really didn't even need to do that. I'm not, I'm not saying, Hey, you need to go off plan, but I just, I was very proud of myself that it was a meal instead of a whole week. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Cause I was mm -hmm. able to just bounce right back from that. And then, um, there's been a once where it was like a day and a half or something, but I'm, I haven't, I'm, I'm very thankful that I haven't, this year been like hey i'm gonna take a whole week and be off plan because yeah. last year there was multiple times where i was like yeah. in the dumps and, and another thing too is last year i did a lot of beating myself up like when mm -hmm. i would get off plan i would get i would beat myself up and be like man you you're the worst person i can't believe mm -hmm. you're doing this you're ruining everything this year i've been trying to give myself a little bit more grace and be like no look you're human you're trying to work through like you had your whole lifetime of uh, of getting in the shape that you're in and getting super overweight and super unhealthy and it's taking you some time to fix a lot of those issues so you got to give yourself a little grace along the way yeah yeah and uh, you know food addiction is real and it's it's a, it's a journey for everyone it's it's not a race you know um it's a marathon trying trying to get you, take your health back and it, some people can do it quickly some people take you know have, they have hills and valleys you know what i mean so it's yeah. it's it's about it's not giving up yeah exactly at the end of the day he's like you can't give up like 
you just if you fail and you do have a cheat day, week, month, year, you know, at the end of the day, like get back on the wagon at some point and just just take your health back and and get on that journey again. And I um, wouldn't recommend a cheat month though because you no, know, I'm just I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, I'm just. Yeah, I you know, know what I mean. I'm just saying. I, I'm just letting them know that if they if any of them watching don't know me. I went off plan for two months last year, and when I went off plan for two months, I gained sixty one pounds. And so, yeah. don't do it. I promise <laughs> you, it ain't worth it. <laughs> but, but you know, food addiction is real, and like when you, all of us who have been, or or all of us who are morbidly obese, you know, we got there because we ate our emotions. We our life revolved around food. That's how we cope with everything, and. Mm -hmm it takes time to get over those things and to get past those things. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a mental game. It's a psychological thing. And like, it's, it's not something that you can fix overnight. You know, it's something that's, it's a journey and it's probably something that we'll deal with our whole lives. You know, um, some people turn to alcohol, some people turn to drugs, some people turn to whatever, but you know, I'll, I'll, I turn to sugar and carbs and I know keep you the same way. And um, so like, it's, it's, it's not, easy to give that up and to figure out how to channel your emo and deal with your emotions that doesn't roll around food um you got to find yeah. healthy ways to 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 deal with those things you know what i mean um it could be i don't know you name it i like going fishing i like working out those are two things that i um try to relieve stress and channel my emotions into and um there's there's things that you can do that don't roll around food that you can um help get past your addictions with so that's just my two cents but <laughs> yeah i mean that's good man yeah um let's see did you uh, ever notice last year like um uh, or oh uh, did you ever notice like when you would uh i just lost my train of thought i was trying <laughs> to plug in my keyboard because it's coming undone and when i did i lost my train of thought <laughs> we'll just have to go to the question in a minute i'll be like oh that's exactly what it was and then i'll, and okay. then I'll go with okay. it i don't know if this person's trolling or not but obviously onions are not carnivore it's a it's a plant <laughs> so i'm just gonna mention that <laughs> um nope they're not carnivore oh so here's here's okay this goes back to that um the question or comment from earlier about the american heart association I think that's what he's talking about, Daryl. Um, studies have not been released officially. It was actually done in China and dealt with questionnaire, supposedly. Of course. Um, all these, oh, red meat causes diabetes, those questionnaires, it's, it's all stupidity. Like, no one's going to remember what they ate, you know, for the last year, how many times they had meat for the last year. If you consider pepperonis on a pizza, red meat, that doesn't count. How much carbs and sugar are they eating? it doesn't work so yeah like they consider a hamburger with all kind of other stuff on it they consider that oh they're eating red meat i'm like yeah what yeah. about all this stuff on that burger oh, they're, they're, every fast food place you go to there's sugar in the buns there's sugar all throughout it there's full of carbs and it's just it's seed oils it's just no it's terrible terrible food um yeah so i mean if if red meat causes diabetes then I would be diabetic and I'm the complete opposite according to my blood work. So I'm very sens insulin sensitive. Um, so that's all I'm saying. Um, yeah, and I think right. a lot of carnivores are, can say the same thing, you know? So. Absolutely. Okay. Trying to find a question. Yeah. Let's see. Extended fasts are great for resetting the gut and metabolism. Um, I've not tried an extended fast yet, and I don't think you have either, Kip. But um, yeah, I've heard I've heard there's a lot of great benefits of that. Um, I'm thinking eventually I'll probably do like a 48 or 72 hour fast at some point, but I'm not there. I'm not ready for that yet. I'm still trying to. Uh, I'm staying in my comfort zone where I, I know mad, where I know I, I can be successful and continue to, to burn body fat. So do you ever have to work? Uh, I don't know if works the right thing word, but like, is it ever a struggle to stay OMAD or is it always easy to wait? Do you do your one meal early or late in the evening? Um, 
I just do my one meal um, when I go from work. So between between five and six thirty is when I eat, generally speaking. And I, I do a twenty three hour fast, so I eat my we eating windows in one hour usually. So yeah. it's just dinner. I usually just have like four or five eggs and like a eighteen or twenty ounce steak or or a pound of ground beef. Um, do you ever I, do you ever notice that like a couple hours before that or four hours before that you're starting to get really hungry or do you just not get that hungry until then? Um, well, so lately I've been doing OMAD during the work week and then weekends I've been doing two meals, but I yeah. usually eat my lunch on Saturday and Sunday, like at one thirty, two o'clock. So it's a little bit later. Um, but when I'm working, cause I, I work, I do HVAC. So I'm constantly moving up, doing things and, and, I drink coffee and water throughout the day. So I'm not, if I get hungry, I just, I drink water or coffee and that usually makes the hunger go away for a little bit. But generally speaking, if I'm staying busy and I'm actively doing stuff, I'm not really thinking about food. Um, I'm just kind of going and going and going. And then I start to get hungry on the drive home and I'm like, okay, I usually, <laughs> if, that was, if, I, if, if I'm driving home and I get really hungry, I usually pack a couple of chomps. So I eat chomps on the way home and then I'll cook dinner when I get home. So um, that's mm -hmm. kind of what I've been doing for the last couple months. And then, like I said, on weekends, I do just two meals a day and I usually eat around uh, two o'clock or so, give or take. So, yeah. And I think that, that, that act of job helps you out a lot too. Cause me, mm -hmm. I, I sit behind a computer all day. And then whenever I do live streams, I'm behind a computer too. Is everyone does you know everyone has a different activity level in their day-to-day -day, just normal life so like for, for me i'm somewhat active and i and I, I come home and like i try to i try to lift weights now for an hour or so about four times a week so like that helps too but um and sometimes i'll come home and work out fasted which is kind of nice actually uh, working out with uh fasted is is for, for whatever reason, sometimes I feel like I can have more energy while I'm working out fasted and I feel like I have a better, I don't know, I can lift more, I can push more, get more reps and stuff. So I don't know. It's kind of, it's kind of weird. <laughs> well, I mean, um, if you think about it, like, what do you think your ancestors did? Yeah, like, exactly. They had to go get, they had to go work for their food and stuff. And a lot of times they were fasted when they were uh chasing deer and chasing different animals and yep. all that stuff and they Buffalo. they they had to have all that energy to go uh take care of that task or whatever and so i mean i, I think a lot of it is our body is kind of designed that way yeah for sure um you so are you still doing three meals a day or are you down to two meals now because i know you were, yeah you did, i'm you doing two meals. meals and then now you're on two meals yeah, I'm doing two meals, but sometimes I only do one meal or I'll do like one meal and then like some chomps or something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but usually I would say more often than not, it's two meals, maybe two of the days during the week. It's one meal. Um, okay. But I'm trying to get better with like making sure that I'm not doing the cheese and stuff because, man, the cheese, that stuff, it messes with me whenever I have it. But uh, yeah. right, mainly two meals. Are you still BBE? Are you uh, just are you mixing it up a little bit or what? Right now, I'm mixing it up a little bit. I feel like mm -hmm. when I was doing BBB and E, I felt great doing BBB and E. But honestly, I when I do it, I just I don't really crave the eggs like everybody, and I don't crave the bacon. I mainly crave mm -hmm. like beef and seafood. So. Okay. That's the main things I want. Like I want beef all the time. And then when I want something different, I want shrimp. Yeah. And okay. so that's the main things. And so, and of course, butter. I mean, I'll do some butter with my steaks and stuff like that. But um, mm -hmm. that's pretty much mainly what I'm doing. But right now I'm doing just, I'm calling it regular carnivore, but without, without dairy. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I enjoy that, but even though I'm calling it that I'm still eating more beef than anything. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. I found for me lately, at least in the last six weeks or so, I've just not been really wanting bacon. Um, I just been sticking to mostly 
beef and eggs. And sometimes I'll like on Saturdays, I'll pick up a Costco chicken and eat that for lunch for a day or two. And then well, some uh, people will chew you out over that boy. I don't care. It's, <laughs> it's you better you know? not, not let nobody tell Dr. <laughs> Chapin what you did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then, uh, um, and then, yeah, sometimes I'll like I have shrimp. Sometimes um, I like to eat like a like shrimp with my steak. Sometimes on Friday nights or whatever. Like tonight, I had eggs and shrimp for dinner. So no. um, it, it all depends on the mood I'm in, I guess. But mostly beef and eggs is kind of what I've been sticking to. So when I get a wild hair, I mean, I'll I want like some chicken wings, and I'll and I'll do mm -hmm. chicken wings because I, I I just love those. I don't crave any of the other chicken though anymore, like chicken breast or. I even I'll eat like chicken legs and stuff, but I don't go out of my way to go get them anymore. But like every now and then I just want to throw some chicken wings on the grill or if we're out somewhere and uh, I'm like, I just don't want to go pay for a steak at a restaurant right now. I'll just mm -hmm. get some wings, some hot wings or something. Yeah. And um, I had a thought. Oh, yeah. Something that's different about um, that I've noticed since going carnivore and become a fat adapt is like before i would when i would eat chicken you know on a standard american diet i would always go for the white meat always go for breasts and wings right but now like i'm craving that leg you know that the fat on that leg that's like that drumstick and that skin yeah yep mm -hmm. at so the barbecue kind of meetup that we're doing i'm actually gonna cook some chicken at it too i'm gonna cook brisket i'm gonna cook pork butts i'm gonna cook uh leg quarters which it has the leg and the thigh which is both dark meat so i'm gonna smoke leg quarters and then i'm also gonna do for people that are okay with something that's a little processed i'm gonna have uh smoked sausage too man i wish i could go <laughs> it sounds I'm so good tell you buddy you better get a point look hey when i say it's gonna be good I, that's a promise oh, with, with you <laughs> i know it's gonna be good what are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> you know one of these days one of these days we're gonna have to have we're gonna have to get together and uh you yeah, have to cook some barbecue sure. man because man <laughs> it's, gonna, it's, gonna, uh, it's gonna be fire oh yeah for <laughs> sure i uh, i wish i could go and like we need we need to do some kind of something uh, yeah we'll, 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 we'll me and you will do some talks and we'll figure something out yeah for sure we could we, we should do like a just a hangout thing, but like also a meetup with like with some people would be cool too. But, yeah, we, uh, could do, we could do something together, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Well, it's definitely <laughs> Caitlin. <laughs> she's uh, she, Caitlin's not feeling well tonight, she's pregnant and sick, so that's why she's not here. But she's just <laughs> she decided to throw that in there. <laughs> My wife hops in my chats and says different stuff. <laughs> okay. Uh, Carnivore yeah. Odyssey said worldwide meet and greet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, that'd be kind of cool. Let's see. Interesting. This right here. Okay. 72 hour fast for their journey came out with a fast with severe car cravings. Weird. I wonder if it's because like your body was craving a quick energy source and you were just like carbs, you know, that's, that, that could be it. That's my, yeah, answer. because for so many years, that's what people did. Mm -hmm. And, but I will say this, I was in a situation. I wasn't, it wasn't a fasting situation, but it was a, just a situation where, uh, I was picking up some pizza for, uh, some family members and I was planning to cook a steak at their house. So I had a, a steak in a Ziploc bag that I was taking over there and I had a big old thing of butter, real butter. And mm -hmm. uh, I had that pizza in the car and dude, that pizza smelled up my whole car. And I was like, dude, I want some of that pizza now. And uh, I was like smelling it and smelling it. And so I took a big old hunk of that butter and I took a big old bite of it and just let it set in my mouth. And literally within like a minute, I didn't even care about having the pizza anymore. So, yeah, you know, sometimes it's just getting the right yeah. fuel source will take care of the problem. Yeah, that's something that um, a lot of people have talked about. Like, you know, if you have cravings, they'll just bite butter. And uh, it was. 
Yeah, it does. It does. It really does. And it's, it's good too. Um, oh, yeah. What kind of, so here's a question. I know butter is kind of a sticky subject, but what kind of butter do you normally eat? If I can have my preference, then I, I think Kerrygold's the best that I've tried. I, I like Amish butter too. I've got, uh, mm-hmm. we've got a place that's got Amish butter, but I don't like the way that it's cut in, in the roll or whatever. I feel like I don't cut it as good. I, that's the reason I like Kerrygold and stuff like that better. It's yeah. easier to cut the what in the portions that I want or whatever. And mm-hmm. I, I just think it's got the best taste. But then I've also tried like the Aldi butter, which is kind of like Kerrygold. And I think it's pretty good. If I'm at like Walmart in our small town and they're out of Kerrygold or something, because they don't have a lot of options, then I'll get Lando Lakes butter. But the, the the cheap Walmart butter to me, I will eat it if that's what my wife gets, but I just don't think it tastes as good. I think Kerrygold yeah. is king. Yeah. Yeah. I um for the longest time I was just doing like the Kirkland generic yeah, salted butter. Um ever since we started going to Costco. But lately I've been digging the grass fed Kirkland butter. It's basically their version it's of Kerrygold. Like Kerrygold, right? Yeah. And it's it just has so much better flavor. Like it, it's just it's so much more rich. Have you and tried like, Kerry Gold? I have not because I don't it's just because it'll cost you money, buddy. I, I might can. try. I might get some at Walmart because you don't have to buy it in bulk there. Um, because I might just get like a like a brick of it at uh, Walmart. But well, here's the thing: Do you ever put yours on your food cold, like the like a hunk of butter, or do you just cook with the butter and like have melted butter on your food? I um I cook my eggs in them in butter and then I late I used to put butter on top of my steak, but I'm trying to reduce make calories and, and make the small cuts less less a little bit less fat. So I haven't been putting butter on top of my steak, but mostly just cooking with uh, eggs with it and cooking like tonight. I cook shrimp in butter and you know salt and pepper, but. That'd be a fun um, video for you to do is uh like have like three different butters or something like the the Walmart or whatever the carry gold and then like maybe a Costco one or whatever and just see mm-hmm. you just see you react to trying the carry gold butter. Like a blind taste test, yeah, yeah. That might, that's not a bad idea actually. Um, I expect it in idea. about tomorrow. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's not on our, our video calendar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Big Mike's Hoopty Barn. I'm new to oh, car like <laughs> yeah. Week seven, lost 18 pounds so far. Awesome. Good job. Um, I haven't lost much for the last two weeks, but I'm okay with it considering I'm eating a lot of a lot in hitting the weights. Okay, awesome. So you that good job. 18 pounds in seven weeks. That's awesome. Well, actually five weeks then because you said you haven't lost much in the last two weeks so um that's awesome keep going keep going i think Um, everybody hits a point where their body like is like trying to figure things out and mm -hmm. you just got to give it a little bit more time and then your body will start releasing weight it's not just a straight down thing Mm -hmm. for a lot of people i mean Mm -hmm. there's going to be times where you'll stall out for a little bit and you'll think it's a stall but you just Give it time and your body will release more weight. There's times I've I've got on the scale, which I don't recommend getting on a scale for me at least every day because if I do, like it plays mind games with me. But there's mm-hmm. times when I would get on the scale every day and like it wouldn't do it wouldn't drop a pound for like a week. And then I'd wake up the next day and it'd be down five or six pounds. And I'm yep. just like, dude, it's so weird, yep. man. Yep. I had the same thing going on. And for me, like I stalled, I stalled for a solid month um or so and then i had to stop and like think like what am i doing that's causing me to stall is it you know my i found myself eating too much cheese and putting cream in my coffee i found myself drinking um too much like uh sucralose or stevia and stuff or like those like sparkling ice drinks or whatever it is with sweeteners so and also i found myself not being as active um so that's 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 one thing too is you gotta when you're I'm not saying he, this is why he's stalling out, but I'm, yeah. what I'm saying is like, this is deep into my journey. Right. So like you got to sometimes take a step back and make micro adjustments to things and figure out why you're stalling out, but also focus on how you're feeling, how you're close fitting, what are your measurements, um, what's your energy levels, 
all that kind of stuff, butcher information, like don't focus on the scale so much. That's the overall um, thing I'm trying to get out of this, but <laughs> it'll take care of itself. The scale will yeah. take care of itself. If yep. you just yep. eat the meat. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And there'll be times where you go a week without losing any weight. And then like, you know, then the next day you wake up and you down three pounds and, <laughs> yeah. and, you, and you feel like you ate a lot of calories a day before you're like, you ate way too much. Like you stuffed yourself and it's like, Oh, I woke up and I'm five pounds lighter. Like, what the heck? You know, <laughs> yeah. it, it happens. It's just, that's how carnivore is. I don't know. It's weird. That's crazy. Um, here's a question from carnivore 24. Uh, TMI warning, but so I know diarrhea happens at the beginning, but if you struggle with it randomly throughout the journey, I don't know what I have. But my tummy is upset tonight. How much uh, butter they eat? Yeah, like so that can get you. Yeah, I I struggle with this too. Even sometimes now, sometimes I'll get random random diarrhea, and usually it's because I've had too much fat. So maybe not put so much butter on your steak or eggs or whatever. Um, just yeah, how much fat are you eating? Um, and now of course this is past your adjustment period. I'm assuming. You know, if, if you're having this issue, um, cause I know in the first, like two, two, two first month, basically you're going to be struggling. Your gut's going to be adjusting to your, um, the different way of eating. So I would, uh, careful on the fat. I don't know. Do you have any thoughts on that? Yep. That's exactly what I was saying was like, my first thought was like butter and things like that. Cause like we have this, a lot of us that like have these food addiction problems for years will, uh, when we start carnivore and, and I've been done this too and being like, I'm trying to make sure that I don't have cravings. So I'll just put tons and tons of butter on my steak and a, to, I'm trying to constantly feel as full as possible and, uh, to make sure that I don't have a slip up. And mm -hmm. the thing is, when you do that, sometimes you'll go way overboard with the butter and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I've ate meals that was just had tons of butter on it. And like 30 minutes later, I run to the toilet. And then there's also been times just where like um, because I'm not used to eating as much spicy food anymore. So if I put a little mm -hmm. bit too much hot sauce or a little bit too much, uh, you know, cayenne pepper on a brisket or something like that, and I have a little bit too much. Uh, it can, it can mess with me just a little bit as well, but that's just cause mm -hmm. I'm so, I I'm used to eating so clean now that any little thing can throw things off a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And, <clears throat> and especially if you, if you're like, if you're someone who eats the same, like two or three meals all the time, you know, and then you do something different mm -hmm. that could like say one, say you're used to eating just eggs and steak and eggs and beef. And then one day you're eating. Um, a ton of cheese and some bacon that, that could that messed me up before so i mean it, it depends on different factors but um anyways here is another one um you're not getting weight with diet soda never said we were but you will it will stall you out and also it makes if i drink too much carbonation or diet soda i get really bloated um the carbonation in my, in my gut and i just feel like full and just my stomach just doesn't feel right. Um, and then, yeah, so it will definitely, it, it will cause you to stall for sure. Um, it also causes some people, no, I'm not saying it causes everybody, but it causes a lot of people to crave other things. Mm -hmm. Like whenever you're having like sucralose, and there might, somebody might have it or aspartame or something and it might not affect them at all. But then other mm -hmm. people, when they have it, it makes them want donuts and all this other different stuff. So if you're that person, uh, but yeah. I mean, if you do any amount of research for more than five minutes, you'll know that Diet Coke is not great for you. It's yeah. better for you than regular Coke, but it still ain't as good for you as no Coke. Still got chemicals and everything else in it, and colorings. And uh, here's Caitlin just on the same subject. Um, yeah, depending on the diet, so it can trigger an insulin spike and then lead your body to start. Yeah. So um, insulin, the hormone insulin, when it increases in your in your blood. And your body releases insulin, you're, it, it causes you not to burn fat. Like it, like people who have higher insulin levels have trouble losing weight and losing body fat. Um, so yes, it will cause you to stall out because it is spiking your insulin, especially things like I know a lot of people. Uh, 
uh, with sucralose, it will spike insulin. Um, even though there's no calories in it or whatever, it can spike insulin. Aspartame can also do that too. So you got to be careful. Um, stevia is probably one of the better ones. And I, I do drink like Element that has stevia in it. Um, and Zevia sometimes, if I really want to soda, I'll drink Zevia. Um, but it's not like an everyday thing. But uh, yeah, you got to be careful with that because it will, certain things will spike your insulin. And the whole idea of being carnivore is to be more insulin sensitive and not insulin resistant. So um, that's, that's what, that's part of good metabolic health is being insulin sensitive. So that's good. Let's see. We, got a super chat. we did. Where'd it go? Oh, um, boom. Thanks for the super chat. Carnivore Odyssey. Um, carnivore is unlike any lifestyle you would do. It heals your body and the side effect is the weight loss. Carnivore is boss level. Agreed. hundred percent. I love it. hundred <laughs> percent. Yep. Yep. It definitely heals your body. Um, and the side, yep. Um, you know, we're, we're living proof. You know what I mean? I've lost 120 pounds wow. in a year. I've it's crazy. Cured, all my inflammation has gone. I've stopped snoring. I, you know, don't have hardly any more gas or, uh, I used to have IBS. It's gone. I used to be pre-diabetic. I'm it's the complete opposite now. Um, it, it'll heal your depression, your anxiety, your mental issues. It heals everything. Um, do you everything have the same, the, do you have the same doctor that you had before? Yeah, I do. Um, I would love, so I would I, love to be uh, hear what your doctor had to say. I would love to. <laughs> <laughs> so, so did you did you see uh, my first blood work video? I don't think I watched that one. Okay. Um, so I I haven't been to the before June. I haven't been to the doctor in 10, 12 years since I was like a teenager, pretty much. Um, so this is the first because because I was so you know, overweight and and obese and like just was miserable and addicted to sugar. And I knew I didn't want to go and. You knew what they were going to say. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't want to hear what he had to say about my health because I knew it was terrible. Right. Pretty much. You're like, so, nah, no. <laughs> so uh, I, I waited till I was four months carnivore. And, and at that point I had lost 50 pounds at that point in four months. Um, and I went in there and it wasn't bad, but now at that point I was 251. When I went in last week for my blood work, the same doctor, I was 181 at that point and uh he walked in he's like well you've been busy <laughs> he's like the the nurse when she when she looked at the scale she's she was she brought my um my record or whatever she's like did that scale say 181 and i was like yeah she's like you were 251 in june she, yeah. she, she, she thought she read the scale wrong basically you tell her what she was doing or you didn't say nothing I, I I told them I was doing a high protein, low carb, extremely low carb diet, basically. Man, once you already get all the, uh, I get that in the beginning, but once you already get all them results, I'd be like, hey, I'm doing carnivore, dog. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and and at the end of the day, um, I think the next visit, I will probably tell them Spill the truth. Beans. Spill the beans, you know. <laughs> but, I mean, yeah, I'm with, yeah, so. But yes, uh, I definitely good for, for people first starting or like the first six months or whatever, because a lot of doctors are be pushy and all this other stuff and try to convince you not to and stuff. But mm -hmm. like you're already at the point where like it, regardless of what they think, you you know how well you feel and you know how well you've done. So the proof is mm -hmm. in the pudding. So yeah, I mean, what can they say yeah. really? I, I mean, you got you got a very valid point. But at the end of the day, like you know, he. He, he basically told me, like, don't change anything you're doing. You're doing amazing. Um, you're doing phenomenal. Towards his, yeah. his exact words. And, like, we had got into, like, the whole cholesterol and blood work and, like, all these things and started talking about stuff. And it was it was, it was was a good overall appointment. And um, video will be coming out about my blood work soon. I know. I'm ready to watch that video, man. <laughs> um, thanks for the super chat again, Carl Prodesi. We really appreciate yeah, that. Thank you. Appreciate it. And let's see. And let's see. What, where do we live? Okay, here's a question. Um, let me see. Hold on. We missed one. Okay. Carnivore Scott's in the house. He's coming to the barbecue meetup. Nice. It's awesome. 
yeah, back to the artificial sweetener thing. Caitlin had mentioned uh, uh, CGM continuous glucose monitor would tell how your body responds to specific artificial sweeteners. Now, Kip, you you were were you pre diabetic before you started? No, I was full fledged diabetic. I was uh, type two diabetic. Okay, and now you're not. Is that correct? Yeah, I'm nothing now. Okay, like, what, what was your what was your A one C last time you checked it? Well, it was. Uh, well, the last time I checked it, it was 5.4, 5. I think. I think it was 5.4. So it was below pre-diabetic. Yeah, it was normal. Yeah. Yeah, it was 5.4. The time before that, four months before that, was uh, 6.6. 6. Oh, okay. So it's interesting. In did, normal did you, so did you ever do CGMs or you just do like the finger prick thing? Oh, uh, well, they draw blood where I go. They draw blood and do all kind of different blood work. I don't know what all, everything that they do, but I know that they draw blood. Okay. So I think, so when you were managing your diabetes before carnivore, did you check your blood sugar often or, or no? No, honestly, a lot of times I was just like stubborn and I, I didn't want to go to the doctor and I would go every now and then and I would listen to their whole spiel and I would mm -hmm. always feel like I've got to figure this out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this on my own. I feel like part of me knew that I needed to do it on my own and find a way. I just didn't know what it was until I tried carnivore. Gotcha. I, I so, kinda, Cause I got a taste of it whenever I did keto in the past, I got a taste of doing good. And mm -hmm. then, uh, but when I, whenever I went with carnivore, I mean, it just opened my eyes up like big time and started getting, I mean, amazing results. So I just stuck with that. And then now I feel a lot better about going to see the doctor than I did then. Okay. Good stuff. But so, yes, um, Caitlin was talking about that. Um, yeah. CGM, even if you're not diabetic, it's, it's good. I, I'm thinking about getting one for like a month or two weeks or just to see what things do to my blood sugar. Um, would that be good uh, information to have to see what, that's the one that you wear. Yeah, you 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 wear it all the time. And it connects to your phone and just it monitor, monitors your blood sugar all the time, and it'll tell you, you know, what eating this did to your blood sugar, what eating that did to your blood sugar. Lily Kane actually did a video where they her and her husband wore CGM for like a month or something, and then she talked about here's what I ate and here's what it did. You know, when I ate this, here's what it did. Here's you know, it was actually pretty interesting. I need to watch uh, that video because I think she yeah. does like a little bit of fruit and all that different stuff. Yeah, she, and yeah, just yeah. see what happened with her with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she does fruit and veggies sometimes. And um, her husband does like oh, like whole milk and protein powder and, and fruit. And it was really interesting. Um, so but anyways, uh, the next one, we had a good question here. Dime Dalla. <laughs> So glad I caught you live. Well, thanks for thanks for watching. We appreciate it. Uh, make sure you hit that like button. Um, question: Did you do calorie deficit while doing carnivore? Um, in the beginning, no, I definitely did not count calories. Now the thing is, when you're eating a ton of fat and protein, that's all you're eating, and you're doing zero carbs, you get full quicker and easier on less calories, and you feel satiated sooner than you did on on carbs. And also, your body is utilizing that fat for energy, and it's it's and you're not really hungry anymore until your your next meal. So um, if you are obese, morally obese, and you're just eating so you're full, you'll be in a calorie deficit, even though you're not counting. I promise. <laughs> Unless you're like way overeating, but I don't think it's possible to really overeat fat and protein. Um, I didn't count calories until the last like two months because now I'm getting leaner and leaner and trying to get to my goals. So now I am counting calories because I actually do have to make sure I'm not, I'm still in a deficit, whether it's with activity or food. Um, but generally speaking, you don't have to, cause usually you're, you're good with eating just fat and protein. You're full and you're, you're not really super hungry. The thing with carbs is like it uses this dopamine hit and it makes you want more eating car like you can eat a ton of carbs and overeat your calories and still want more but if you're just eating, eating fat and protein you're good to go once you're full like you're you're good to your next meal um that's why a lot of people after like you know a few weeks or a month will go to two meals a day they just skip breakfast because they're not hungry anymore um but what about you kip do you ever count your calories <laughs> 
Yeah, I mean, when you're when you're this size, you don't worry about counting calories. When I get down close to my goal weight, then, uh, and honestly, if I if I get close to my goal weight and I'm still losing weight, even if it's at a slow pace, then mm -hmm. I might not even do it then. But if I get to a point where like those last 10, 15 pounds, they're not wanting to budge, then that would be like a next change that I would make to uh to to get that whole situation figured out. Because I mean, I know that. Cal, I've heard that calories isn't the best metric to use and all that different stuff or whatever. But I mean, mm -hmm. it's one of the only ones that we got to go by, I guess. So, I mean, it is something that you can use to help you make sure you're just not doing just a little bit too much. Yeah. Calories still do matter. Um, even though mm -hmm. like it's, I know the car work community, they say, oh, you don't have to count calories in the beginning. No, you really don't. Especially if you're, you know, if you're, if you're 50, 100 200 pounds overweight you're not like uh, you don't have to count calories because to keep you that big you're gonna have to <laughs> thousands and thousands of calories right that's a and, lot of steak yeah you know what I'm saying? <laughs> if you're just eating two three ribeyes a day and and you're full you're you'll be in a deficit you know i promise <laughs> but yeah. um the leaner you get the more you have to pay attention to that stuff um, and I think the next one related to that, you know, uh, five, 10, 300 pounds, how many calories does you need a day? Um, I wouldn't worry about counting calories. I would just stick to eating beef, butter, bacon, and eggs for now. And, um, okay. You know, you can have seafood, just stick to carnivore pork, chicken's all good. Um, just stick to carnivore, eat till you're full and go from there. Um, you can calculate what your basal metabolic rate is basically what you, what your, if you literally sat in a chair all day and ate food, how many calories would you burn just sitting there existing? That would be your basic metabolic rate. Um, so you can calculate that. There's calculators online you can look at for that. But I would say in your situation, 300 pounds, 5'10", um, you know, you're, you have a lot of weight to lose, at least 100 pounds. I would say don't worry about counting calories. Just eat till you're full. That's and what you, Dr. Barry would say. He would say eat until mm -hmm. you're uh, yep. comfortably stuffed or whatever, however he says it eat till you're satiated, eat till you're comfortably stuffed and just make yep. sure you're eating the right food. Yep. Uh, here's a quick, good question. Do you guys stick to basic meat and beef or do you use other things like sausage, pepper, and dill meats? Um, I, I currently I stick to just basic meat and beef and eggs and stuff like that. But I know in the beginning when I was transitioning, um, I would eat pepperonis often and deli meats here and there. Um, but now I kind of got away from that. Um, what about you? I normally just eat like whole cuts of meat, um, uh, steak or sometimes hamburgers, eggs every now and then. But like today, actually I had some sausage and that's more processed or whatever, but I had a pack of sausage in the freezer and I was getting hungry at lunchtime and I was like, I could speed all that real quick because I didn't have anything. And I was like, I was thinking I was just going to do one meal today, but I was like, you know what? I got a pack of sausage in the freezer. I'm going to speed thaw it. And I had that for lunch and I don't think it's going to affect me or anything, but I don't eat sausage like every day. Yeah. I used to eat like the, like it's clean sausage. You could like breakfast sausage is clean sausage. You can find, I used to eat that. Um, in the beginning for sure but yeah i mean if you're having an occasional sausage and pepperoni deli meats every, every once in a while it's not that big of a deal but i wouldn't make it a big part of your of what you eat i would try to stick to actual like non-processed foods um if you can for the most part snacking here and there on a pepper a couple of pepperoni slices or you know or whatever um it's not that big of a deal but I could never get enough pepperoni slices though. That's the problem with me. I used to yeah. eat a ton of that stuff. So it's better for me mm -hmm. to stay away from it. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you there. <laughs> Things good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see. I'm trying to get caught up here because we were way behind in comments. So I'm trying to scroll past and see what we can find. Um, let's see. Yeah, here's the big man last week talking about um, getting off plan and how much how fast you can gain weight. Kip, you can you can attest to that there. Oh yeah, <laughs> you, you, you sit you for two months and gain sixty one pounds. Is that right? 
Yeah, 61 pounds. I was in shock. I was like, I, I knew I gained a bunch of weight, okay? But I didn't think I gained that much. I thought I was like, I told my wife, I was like, I'm probably going to step on this scale, and I feel like I'm up about 35, maybe four, maybe 40 pounds, mm -hmm. maybe. Because, I mean, I ain't going to lie. When I went off the rails, buddy, I was like, I was like a drug head. Like, I was like, <laughs> you, were, you were binging on everything. Oh, uh, yeah, I was, going, I was going to town. And uh, yeah. whenever, uh, whenever I stepped on the scale and I was like 61 pounds down, I was like, dude, I felt like an idiot because I over halfway, I, I literally half of the results that I got in the year was ruined in two months. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. you know, that's the reason that I don't want that mistake to happen again. It's definitely a learning experience. Yeah. And you know, that that's part of the journey sometimes it's just like you learned a valuable lesson, you know, and then you remember that. You know, yeah. I know one thing. I don't want to gain 61 pounds when the holidays <laughs> get here this year. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and yeah, yeah. And there's ways that you can you can still have a carnivore Thanksgiving, carnivore Christmas, even if it's ketovore and that's your cheating, like eating a few veggies here and there. Do it. You know what I mean? You don't want to yeah, go off cabbage and green uh the green beans and stuff not gonna make you gain yeah. sixty one pounds. Exactly. Just <laughs> uh, yeah. It, all right. The carnivore. I like this comment. <laughs> Recording coffee. If it doesn't affect you, be okay with it. Enjoy it. Agreed. <laughs> I do. Uh, give it up when you're ready and not a moment before. If you're kind, if you have to be kind to yourself always. Yep. I agree with you there. I drink, still drink coffee every day. <clears throat> um, She's always I, sweet in the comment section. <laughs> She always yeah. has something positive to say. Yeah, that's awesome. Let's see. Nah, man, you got you got to give up coffee tomorrow, man. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here's a good comment, Anthony Romano. I feel like as long as you come back to carnivore and container relapses, all is well. In the long run, you can taper off of food addiction. Yeah, agreed. Hundred percent agreed. Um, you always want to come back to the carnivore or whatever way of eating you choose, whether it's keto or keto, whatever, um, contain those relapses. Yep. Yep. And the, you just get better and better. And then of course the next carnivore store, next comment kind of goes with this. Um, the spas took four years in their journey. So be kind to yourself. Exactly. Um, that's what the subscriber was telling me like yesterday, they emailed me and they were telling me, uh, because I was talking about how like I'd had an off plan day versus last year having an off plan week and an off plan month. Like mm -hmm. I had an off plan day and they were like, you know, don't beat yourself up over that day. Even if you have a day again, so, so far from now in the future, because like it used to be a whole lot more than that. And like, and they mentioned, they said, Lars Path and them, it took them like, four to six she i think they said maybe even six years that they've been on this journey and it wasn't like they just lost all their weight in the first year and kept everything mm -hmm. off it they went from like keto to different but different things i'm not sure of the whole plan that they had but it took them a little while and making mistakes and everything it didn't just happen overnight yeah 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 for sure you know like like we said before it's 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 a marathon not a race you know um even if you the think good you're thing for me and you is that we're we're both pretty young. Like, how old are you? I'm thirty. I'm thirty two. Yeah, yeah, so you're thirty or thirty two. Thirty two. So okay. I'm thirty two yeah. years old. Like, are you thirty two or no? Nah. <laughs> but uh, but anyway, I mean, it's just one thing that I'm, I feel very blessed and very fortunate is that we mm -hmm. found this at such a young age where yeah. a lot of my viewers, they'll say, man, I'm 60 or 70 mm -hmm. years old. And I wish I knew about this sooner. Like, and it makes me realize just how blessed I am to, to have found this now. So I have so much time to work out the kinks and, and, and not beat myself up if it doesn't happen just overnight. Cause I know without a shadow of a doubt, that I'm not quitting and I'm not giving up because like the results are too good. I feel too much better. There's no way that I'm giving this up. Yep. Yep. Exactly. You know, and I, I agree with you there. You know, I'm blessed to have found it, found this way of eating at a young age too. Cause 
you know, I, I got to the point where I was just so miserable and so like looking for an answer to change my health. And like, I'm just so thankful that, that I found this, you know, and, and I was able to be so successful with it and, you know, conquer so many issues and, and health issues and mental issues. And it's been, it's been a, a amazing journey, even though like, even though I haven't gone off the rails in it or anything, I, you know, and it's just, it's, it's been, it's been a blessing for sure. And even if I did ever go off the rails and gain weight, at least I always know I can come back to it and I know I can be successful, you know? So B B one Renner said 32 or 32. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see. Oh man. Okay, here's a question from Ewill5265. I got my blood test results back and cholesterol was slightly high. I think I've heard of others with the same thing. Thoughts? You want to talk about this first, Kip, or no? <laughs> For me, I'm a simple guy. Okay, look, if Dr. Barry's not worried about my cholesterol, then I'm not too worried about it right now. Like, he, he does so much research that, yeah. like, yeah, like I'm mean, and, and I've been watching him for so long and I know that he actually does gets in the literature and does all kind of different stuff. Sometimes he'll try to prove himself wrong. And he like he's he has an open mind. And so he does so much research and like if he's not by by af, after all the debates he's had and after all this time if he's not super super worried about cholesterol I don't think that I need to be as concerned about if everything else is great and those numbers aren't perfect, then I'm, I'm going to just r ride with that. I don't know about you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so um, there's a lot of research coming out. Um, actually, the prelim preliminary study came out in January about um, lean mass hyperresponders and what that is basically is um, – so if you're on a keto or low carb diet in a keto spectrum, where it's carnivore, keto or keto or even low carb, um, and the leaner you get, actually the higher cholesterol will go up. Um, the the key here is is there's a couple things to, to remember. How is your overall metabolic health, not just your cholesterol? So what is your A1C? What's your average glucose for the last three months? What is your um, fasting insulin? What are your um, what is your homocysteine levels? What is your everything look like? You know, are you some insulin sensitive or insulin resistant? Um, what is your waist measurements? What is your blood pressure? Um, the, all those things you have to look at the whole picture, not just one thing. And if everything else is great, but you have elevated cholesterol, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Um, the biggest thing is if your triglycerides are low with it or a normal range and your HDL is high, and you have high LDL, significantly high LDL, and everything else looks good in the insulin department and sugar department, you're probably a lean mass hyperresponder. Um, so the research is coming out about that, and there's more information about that. Uh, check out Dave Feldman and Nick Norowitz. Um, those are two channels that they were directly involved with the study. Um, basically, the study, um, how, so they took a group, I have the information here on my phone, so I can kind of give you a little bit of information about it, but, um, they took, where's it at? Uh, it was Dr. Matt Budoff and professor Dave Feldman, who Dave Feldman actually created a lipid energy model. It took a hundred people. The average age was, age was 55 and they were male. Um, they were on a low carb, high fat diet for at least five years. Their average LDL cholesterol was 200 to 500 just LDL alone. Um, and they took their, they did CT coronary CT angiography, which is very detailed scan of the heart and the arteries. And, um, it, it's how you test your, your cardiovascular if a plaque or if there's any restrictions in your, your heart or your arteries. And, um, they found that these people with extremely high LDL, high HDL, but low triglycerides and everything else was fine. And they're also lean, um, no, like low body fat, they found that these people had a better, um, they had a CAC score of zero and very low risk of cardiovascular disease. In fact, they were compared to another healthy group with low cholesterol, 
with little to, and they were actually doing better than the people with lower cholesterol. So um, there's LD. I wouldn't get too worried about LDL. That's what I'm trying to say. Because there's 70% of the heart attacks that happen in the U.S. have no, low to normal LDL level cholesterol levels. Um, if you talk, if you look at like Dr. Philip Avedia, he talks about he's a heart surgeon. He's been operating on hearts for 20 years, and he's also um, part of the carnivore community. He's pro carnivore, and he talks about the, the number one risk factor in his uh, clinical observation is um, insulin resistance and um, blood pressure, basically metabolic syndrome, insulin resistance, blood pressure, your your waist, your like your waist circumference. Um, those things are all play into it, but. I would just not worry about it if you're not eating any if you're on a carnivore diet or a low carb diet and you have high cholesterol i wouldn't worry too much about it but i'm not a doctor do your research <laughs> talk, to, talk to your doctor I don't um, know. yeah and and that's all i'm saying but um because i have the same issue everything is perfect i have high cholesterol but i'm healthier than i've ever been in my life you know so i don't know it's just i'm not too worried about it um that's me so okay well, that was great man i can tell you've been doing your homework yeah, i was i felt like i was blabbering there for a while no you were i mean like you're <laughs> uh you need to get our i don't know if you studied medical stuff at all but if not you need to uh change careers and go be a doctor because you you've, you've learned a lot I've, well i've done a lot of research because of this issue is such a hot issue in you in the community and, and, and with this way of eating i can't tell you how many comments that both that i get and you probably get too about what's your cholesterol is your cholesterol blah, blah blah blah. it's all they care about it's like you need to stop putting so much emphasis on cholesterol like it doesn't matter what is the quality of your cholesterol what is your cac score what is is there any plaque built up in your heart like are you, if you're really worried about it what's your insulin levels what are your is your blood sugar what's your a1c like What's your waist circumference? There's so many things that play into your overall health, not just your cholesterol. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you can't get too wrapped up in that. And also, as you're losing weight, you're you'll have high LDL anyways because it's a you're transporting your cholesterol to your liver and your kidneys and flushing everything out too. Um, so it's, it's, it acts like a, tr a transportation truck, basically your LDL. So also cholesterol is important for your hormonal function. It's part of your cells. Every cell in your body's membrane is made up of cholesterol. Um, mm -hmm. cholesterol is important part of your, your health and your, yep. the way your body functions. So it's, I think it's just been demonized for a long time, but I don't, I don't think it's an issue. As long as, like you said, all your other markers are good. I don't think it's an issue. Exactly. Exactly. Now, if you have insulin resistance and you and you have a high waist circumference and you have high blood pressure and high cholesterol and high triglycerides, which is a key, um, then I would probably change some things in your metabolic health. Okay. I still have a big waist circumference. I still got a ways to go. I'm working on that one. <laughs> it's a journey. It takes time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It took years to to get a big waist circumference. Yeah. It's going to take a while to get into a small waist circumference. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, here's a question, Pat. I'm around your weight now. When you were one 192, and what did you do to retain your second wind? Why are they talking? You know what I mean. Retain my second wind. I don't know what they're talking about. Honestly, do you know what they're talking about? Uh, let's see here. Let's retain your second wind. You know what I mean. Um. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I wonder if they're. I wonder, I wonder if they're referring to back whenever you were talking about uh, uh, a second wind is like whenever you were talking about working out or whatever and working out fasted or something. I don't know. I don't know what they're. I don't know what they're referring to. I don't know. You clarify in the, in the chat. I have no idea what you're talking. Yeah. So yeah. Even Carver, he's like second wind. Yeah. Okay. Um, question for the first time in, in my time of dieting, I'm giving myself more time to lose weight, heal, and get my goal of 80 pounds to lose. Have either of you felt like felt either of you felt like with this? It's it's allowed to give you yourself more time to accomplish your goal and heal. It's a first fire, usually rushing to lose weight. Okay. Um, 
I need to give him one hundred dollars for the one he wants. I'm not sure exactly the way that they wrote it, but I know me. I'm allowing myself some grace to yeah. get there over time like you know because yeah. some people get there quick some people get there it takes them a little bit longer just we're all in this together yep uh, you know you don't you gotta think of like this you know if you're if you, if you, if you said you have 80 pounds to lose how long did it take you to gain that 80 pounds years probably right mm -hmm. so it might take you years to lose it um however carnivore can be a great way to lose it quickly I just wouldn't worry about trying to get the weight off. I would try to worry about uh, focusing on healing your body, healing your metabolic health, healing your all your physical problems, you know, things like that, and just give it time. It, it, some, it takes time to get healthy and lose weight. Um, I wouldn't get so wrapped up in how long it takes. It's it's, it's a marathon. So, okay. I like one thing that which I don't really watch him hardly anymore, but I used to watch back when I did keto a lot, I used to watch Dr. Berg and yeah, he used yeah. to talk. He used to say, you don't um, lose the weight to get healthy. You get healthy to lose the weight. Or he would say it something like that. You get health, you get healthy. And then like you, you think healthy and you make healthy choices. Then the weight loss will come from that. You don't mm -hmm. just I'm mm -hmm. focus on the scale and trying to lose mm -hmm. all this weight and then magically you're going to get healthy. If you just focus on eating the right things and moving your body, if you're able to, and, mm -hmm. you know, just getting plenty of rest at night, staying hydrated. And if you need electrolytes, taking those, if you're doing all those things, your body, you're going to get healthier and healthier and the weight will take care of itself. Yep. Agreed hundred percent. It's not about losing weight. It's about changing your life, changing your health. So it's, it's about changing the way you eat in general. Um, and it, it, we're not saying you have to be like carnivore either. You know, there's a spectrum. You can be keto, you can be ketovore, just eat whole foods. You'll be better off than most people in the U S because everybody's eating junk. They're eating processed crap and yeah. chemicals and, and just, yeah, just, just eat clean. That's all we're saying. And My only I, caveat to people that do keto is I tell them, I'll, I'll be like, look, if you're going to do keto, keto is perfectly fine, but please stay out of the keto aisle. Yes. Like, like don't be tricked by all the keto treats and snacks and goodies and the keto cakes and keto ice cream and all that stuff. If you're going to do keto, keto is fine, but like eat whole foods and eat like some avocados and eat some green beans and some cabbage and things like that. Some different stuff like that. Eat those things with your meat if that's what you want to do. But don't say I'm eating pepperonis and eating uh, uh, just pepperonis and keto cookies all day long and then expect to have amazing results. I mean, those keto cookies and stuff, that that's not good for you. I don't the think. I think the key is whether you're keto or carnivore or whatever, just stick to whole foods. That's, that's the key. Anything in process, it probably isn't good for you. Yep. Whether it's keto or not, I would just stick to whole foods period. So, um, what your body was designed to eat was real food. Exactly. We weren't designed to eat all that junk. <laughs> um, I can afford ground beef. So what's your favorite way to eat that? Um, I'm a simple person. When I do ground beef, I just make patties, throw them in the air fryer, and that's it. I, would, I mean, you can you can do a lot with that. You can make burgers. You can make, you can grill them. You can pan fry them. You can, I mean, I, I just keep it simple, stupid for me. What about you? Well, I like to meal prep them, so I'll make a bunch of half pound patties, or sometimes only quarter quarter pound patties but normally it's eight ounce patties or not even mm -hmm. measured but a lot of times it's just a big handful and i know it's going to be about eight ounces for me and so i'll make a bunch of those and i season them up a little bit and i toss them on the smoker because when you mm -hmm. smoke a burger it's easier to not overcook it because it's cooking slower and so i'll put a thermometer in it because i like to take mine to like 130 i don't like to go like well done on my burgers and so mm -hmm. i'll take them to like 130 and then when you are sometimes 140 but when i when you go into them with your fork or whatever it's just like super moist and mm -hmm. I just think there's excellent that way. And plus you get that added smoke flavor. And it's not hard to do it. People think it's rocket science. You're just firing up your smoker and setting them away. Uh, you get your patties. What, 
what temperature do you cook your and, burgers at? Well, it depends on what kind of what size smoker you got. If you got a smaller smoker, then you want to run lower temps because because uh, if your meat's really close to the unit it, or the smoker itself, it'll pick up a lot of that radiant heat. So mm-hmm. like on a small pit that a lot of people have, 225, 250 max. On a huge pit like my Shirley, you can go 275, 300 even and still get perfect smoked burgers. But on a like most people's little backyard pellet grill or something, put it, set it at like 250 or 225 mm-hmm. and just let them go. And then they're not going to take long. They don't. Mm-hmm. I mean, they might take 30 minutes, 45 minutes, and you got a bunch of smoked burgers, and they're awesome. Okay. I need to, I need to do that because I've, oh, I've never – it, Once you do it, time. man, once you do it, you're going to be like, I should have done this a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll have to try because I've never smoked patties before. So. Oh, man. Just for, hand form your patties. Just yeah. hand form your patties or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, and if you like them big, go with big because when you smoke them – the, the bigger they are, I think the better they are. So I go with like half ounce patties most of the time. Just put them in that smoker and just let them ride. It might take 30 minutes and I'm telling you, they're going to be good. Okay. Okay. I will, uh, I'll have to try that soon. All right. We, I'm trying to get, cause like we've been here an hour and a half. I'm trying to get down to close to the bottom. Yeah. You try uh, to get most of them. Yeah, trying to get caught up here and trying to see if we missed any questions. Let's see. Okay. Wow. We are just like taking too much time with these questions that were like way back. Let's see. And I appreciate everybody joining yeah. us tonight for sure. I definitely yeah, appreciate this y'all. This has been a, all. Yeah, it's been fun. It's been a good, good chat for sure. And we're gonna start, we're gonna start doing this. Once a month. Yep. Yeah, we're going to start trying to do this once a month. Let's see. <laughs> oh, questions right here at the here's bottom. A, here's a... Pat's going to be super busy. Yeah. Yeah, we are. <laughs> uh-huh. That's crazy, man. Yep. You see what Carnivore done done? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. It happens. <laughs> yep, yep. Oh man, let's see. This is a good point to bring up here, um, Carver Odyssey. Um, I just figured this out. Um, someone commented on one of my recent or recent videos, but Element has melted extra in it, which is um, I I didn't know that until someone commented that, and I researched it, and it was it's true. So um watch that stuff so i i still drink element but i'm trying to research into more even cleaner um electrolytes so it's gotta be careful with that that type of stuff so yeah i've heard and i've heard mixed things on that i've heard people get really really mad about it and then i've heard other people say that they use such a such a small amount that it's like I'm like, why do you even put that in there if it's that small of an mm-hmm. amount? Like, so I mean, I don't know. I don't know how much it is or whatever. But me, when I take it, whenever I was taking Element, I was just using just a regular raw unflavored. But honestly, I think I found that for me, I salt my meat enough that I don't really know if I need a lot of extra extra electrolytes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and and I usually will do electrolytes in the summertime when I'm sweating a lot. That's about it. Yeah. And I do it sometimes now if I'm if I know I'm gonna go if I'm gonna lift weights that day. Sometimes I'll do that. But Carver Scott, what's up? Um, I'm from. We live in Nebraska too. I mean, so uh, we live near Lincoln. I'm not gonna say exactly where, but near Lincoln. So go big red. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's see. Trying to see here. Trying to get caught up here. Let's see. Can I? This is an interesting question. Um, Can I eat butter with a fatty liver? Oh, that's a doctor question. I don't know about that one. Yeah, where's Dr. Dr. Chafee or somebody? Yeah, yeah. 
Um, do you have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease? I'm pretty sure you'll be fine eating butter. Um, but that's a question for a doctor. I'm not a doctor and I don't, do you have an answer to that question, Kip? Yeah, I don't know the exact answer to that question, but, um, I mean, so yeah, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> oh, okay. Dylan Snyder. What? Okay. Okay. That's amazing. Yeah. So, um, interesting story. Um, Mops is a, it's like a, it's a mom and preschooler thing. It's a, it's a, um, it's a, it's like every Thursday or something, every other Thursday, like stay home moms take their kids and they go and they do like a Bible study type of thing. They have child cares. It's actually just a community of, of stay home moms. But, um, that's awesome, Dylan, that uh, I don't know who your wife is, but I'm sure my wife does knows who knows your wife. But um, another friend of ours, um, I also convinced him to start uh, changing his health and he's doing well too. He, he's another mops friend, but um, yeah, he's, he started about a month ago or so. I need to get an update on him on how he's doing, but um, yeah, that's awesome. Um, Let's see. We're talking about cholesterol and then, yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Getting caught up, getting caught up. Um, man, we're just so many comments. Yeah. You can never get all yeah, of them. Crazy. You can, but you can never get all of them. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just, we're almost, I'm almost there. I'm just trying to see if we miss any questions. Here's a question for Kip. There you go. I think I might have already answered that question in the comments, oh, but let's see. Kip, okay. I'm over your channel. Yeah. Uh, if you want to see a smoking meat video, go to you can go to my channel and then go to my playlist. I think you can go to my playlist and then just um, in there, one of my playlists will say like um, – barbecue or it may say i can't remember if it's barbecue or barbecue and cast iron or something like that but it'll have all of my smoking meat videos in that playlist anytime you, i have one of those videos i link link it to that playlist if you haven't if you don't know kip is the carnivore barbecue master okay <laughs> <laughs> he is uh he's yeah i've i learned a lot of things from from watching his videos he taught his video taught me how to make jerky on my smoker and and uh, i've learned how to do a good pork butt from from kip and uh now yeah. you're gonna learn how to make smoke burgers yeah there you go yep 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 <laughs> yep i'm gonna have to try that and you're eventually i'll it. Eventually, I want to. I want to do a brisket. I want to have to. We'll have to talk some other time about about that. But yeah, you can do, have it. To do one sooner or later. But um, here is a. I'm, I've caught up on the comments, so we're 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 gonna be logging off soon here, y'all. So if you have any last minute questions, get them in. But here's a question here at the end. Um, I think I need to get some electrolytes because I've been having cramps in my hands and feet. Any suggestions? Um, Element, yeah, it has lots of dextrin, but it's better than better than some other ones out there elements good redmond's relight is also another good option uh, they make redmond's real salt same company um there's redmond's real salt as their sodium and redmond's relight and also keto chow salt uh yep. those are three good options for you element redmond's relight and keto chow salt. have you heard of the new one called salt like with two t's or something yeah. is keto that a new one salt. yep yep that's what that is yeah it's yeah. keto chow makes it it's a s-a-l-t-t -T. yep yeah, yeah, we're we yeah we uh, I need to get some of that because like it, it seems to be a little bit better than the element. We'll see, but um, I want I want to try at some point because uh my problem with the element for me is like having it being too strong and having to put it in a huge water jug and stuff. Uh, <laughs> especially since I do just the unflavored one, and yeah, so exactly. with that you can kind of control. I think you can control the amounts that you're putting in your water bottle or whatever. With the, well, with you, the can, you can get the well, like um, Redmond's Relight, you can either get the packets or you can get like a, a tub of the, the stuff, powder stuff, and you can measure how much you put in. Um, so 
if it, I know for me, when I first started doing element a year ago, it was way too salty and I had to get like a 42 ounce bottle, you know, of water and drink that throughout the day. But now I just do like 30 ounces and it's, I got used to it. But, um, I know that I think salt with two T's, um, still has the same amount of sodium in it. I think it's a thousand milligrams too. So it's still going to be strong. So it, I guess it's just something that, um, for me, I had to get used to it over time. I just don't like feeling like I'm swimming in the ocean, drinking the water. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh yeah she's it does not have melted I th- yeah and that's what i figured um because they, they just came out there i think they're going to be probably elements biggest competitor um, they don't they have know. they don't do the flavor kinds yeah. either do they yeah they do yeah they do well then they got to have um, something in them because there's no yeah, way you get flavor without stevia. having no kind of chemical well the, the natural flavoring and stevia is what they're going to be using. Yeah. I think they're trying to get not use maltodextrin at all because maltodextrin, um, it can sp- it definitely spikes your blood sugar, so you got to be careful with that. Yeah, but what I'm saying though is like even to say natural flavors, there's a whole big get, debate on that too. There's yeah, a whole, know, whole you can go down a wormhole on natural flavors. I know, and it <laughs> seems like um, salt is the cleaner version of element from what I understand. Um, so we'll see what happens with that but um or if element as much money as the elements got if they don't make changes because they're worried about the competition yeah for sure they're not make some changes yeah <clears throat> most definitely and you know that's something that you know i, I want to try salt for sure that's that's because I've, I've tried i have i have a ton of element but it's just now that i've I bought like you know a box of like the big box of them, and then I later learned that they have maltodextrin. I'm like, great, I have to drink it now. It's like, I'm not going to waste money. They're they're not cheap. So, here's a good uh, here is a good question. I'm uh, Empress Resting Beach Face because I have a lot of fat to lose. I'm leery of eating extra fat. Anyone have thoughts or experience on this? Fat eating fat in your diet does not make you fat. Um, what so? Eating a high fat diet does not is not make you fatter or gain weight or retain weight. Um, what makes you um, gain weight is being in a calorie surplus, but also it's the it's the type of calories you're eating. So if you're eating a ton of carbs and sugar and and empty calories and chemicals and everything else, that's what causes you to gain weight and retain water and all this stuff. So if you're eating just fat and protein, you'll lose weight. Um, I've been eating nothing but fat and protein for a year to lost over 120 pounds and Kip's lost, you lost, you lost over a hundred pounds as well. You gained mm-hmm. some back, but you did lose uh, quite a bit there. Yeah. I was down like a hundred and well, I was down 104 pounds, but total, I was down like a hundred and maybe 12, 115 pounds, but some, a couple pounds I lost before I started carnivore. And so on carnivore, I was down 104 pounds, but I gained 61 pounds when I went off plan. And now that I'm back on plan, I think I've lost like 37 pounds this year. Okay. So you lost 37 pounds in what? Two and a half months. Yeah. Of the, of the, uh, of the 61 pounds that I had put back on. Right. Awesome. So So I headed in the right direction again. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay, <laughs> so <laughs> I had to do the question, math. Then. Here's a question. Yeah, so your starting weight was like it was like what, f- almost 500 pounds, 486. Is that My, right? So, yeah, well, yeah. When I started carnivore, it was 486, but a little bit before that, it was 498. My highest weight ever was 498. And what do you? What's your weight? What's your current weight? Last time you right checked. now, uh, 407. So okay. hold on, let's see here. All right, so so you're you're about. 100 pounds not right now i'm down 91 pounds from my my highest weight but i was down more than that but i haven't lost all that i had gained for those two months that i was way off plan Uh um and the same person here said they they lost 130 pounds on low carb keto but regained regained 40 now trying to start over um and the same person who asked the fat question so um Back in the day, they used to think that fat made you fat, but but 
people would eat a low fat diet, but then end up being metabolically unhealthy. You know, they, they would gain weight, retain water and, and be have you know, terrible cardiovascular health. So, um, fat doesn't make you fat. Fat is important to your hormones. It helps uh, thyroid function. It helps a lot of things. Um, so fat is not bad, but um, yeah, I mean, if fat if fat was a problem, everybody that was eating carnivore would be gaining tons of weight. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, because there's tons of people that eat this way and eat keto, and and they all talk about eating fat, eating fat, eating fat. And I mean, think about it. Like, we would all be, you would have gained a ton of weight last year if that was a problem. Yep. yep. All right. This is going to be the last question for the night because it's getting late. And I'm tired. <laughs> after you are too. Um, here is uh, B1 Riddler. Uh, off plan weight gain. Yeah, off plate. Off plan weight gained. Would that be a rebound effect getting off diet? I mean, if you ever quit carnivore, will all the weight come back, or do you have to be on a carnivore for the rest of your life? Um, you want to answer this one first, then I'll. Uh, well, um, I don't. I'm not saying that everybody has to be on carnivore for the rest of their life, because there's some people that switch from carnivore, like their end goals to find somewhere around keto or ketovore. At some point, once they hit their goals, there are people that do fine with ketovore. Or there are people that do fine with keto, but um, when people say a rebounding effect, I mean it's like anything to me. Like, let's say that I was somebody that was an alcoholic. You know, if I was an alcoholic and I quit drinking and I started getting amazing benefits and I started doing good and saving money and and feeling better and not having problems and getting along with my family better, and then I start drinking again. If I decided to start drinking again, guess what? It's going to happen. I'm going to have the same old problems that I used to have. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, it's going to, and it's the same way with smoking cigarettes, but, and it's like with poor diet. Like if you, if you start having a great diet or a great diet plan that you're on and you're doing amazing and having great benefits, if you remove that plan mm-hmm. and you go back to the standard American diet, then yeah, you're going to have the same problems you had before. I mean, the it, problems are going to start coming back because you're getting back into your old ways. I mean, I was eating tons of donuts and I was eating cake and I was eating ice cream and I was eating Popeye's chicken and all this other stuff. So, I mean, yeah, what do you expect is going to happen? I mean, yeah. I, I knew what was happening as it was happening, but I was so into that moment and was just like wild out there that I was doing it anyway. So, mm-hmm. I mean, it... it it happens whenever you go back to now, if I would have, if I would have switched from carnivore to doing like ketovore or something, I don't, I would, I don't think I would have gained 61 pounds. I I don't think I would have had that problem. Mm hundred percent agreed. Um, one of the great things about carnivore is that because it's so restrictive and it's, it's, and you're eating nothing but whole bioavailable nutrient dense food, um, that you're, not only are you, you're healing your body, like you're healing everything, your, your physical health, your metabolic health, your mental health, um, you're reducing inflammation. You're just healing uh, so many things in your body. It's getting back to your body's getting the proper nutrients that it really needs, but also because it's restrictive, um, you're, you're, you're solving your food addiction issues. You know, um, most, probably 95% of people are sugar and carb addicts. We're sugar fiends. You know, we love our carbs and sugar and that's a problem, especially if you're using food to, as your coping mechanism or you're using it to handle your emotions or your world revolves around food, you know? Um, so that's why carnivore has been, is, is so successful for a lot of people because it helps you get over those food addiction issues, but also at the same time, healing your body, shedding those extra pounds you know, and just healing your overall health in general, but also like, um, for me, I know once I hit my goals and I'm in maintenance mode, I might be a little bit more lenient. I might have, you know, say it's a special occasion and, and I feel like having a piece of fruit. I'm, I'm going to eat People that. going to tell you to change your channel name, bro. That's exactly. what they'll do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, like, know. I know. I know. The carbon Nazis will come out. You know? <laughs> but if I want, like, you know, a, a, 
a serving of blueberries or a serving of strawberries, low low glycemic index fruit. I don't see a problem with that. Um, if I if it's Fourth of July or something and I want a piece of watermelon, it's not going to kill me. You know what I mean? The thing is like is fixing your mindset around food is the most important part about this journey and especially for a food addict because if you fix your mindset around food and your addictions when you're maintaining and you're in that healthy space and you're at healthy weight and you're healthy you can try to moderate and see how it goes if you if you find yourself going off the rails and gaining weight and getting into your back back into your old ways of eating then you need to stop know how to stop and go back reset everything, go back into carnivore. Um, it's a great reset tool, but also it's a great way to um, eat long-term and it's a great way to change your overall way of eating and lifestyle. And um, for me, I know I'm probably going to always be mostly carnivore. And like I said, maybe I'll have some green beans here and there. Maybe I'll have um, you know, non some veggies that aren't super high in oxalates every once in a while, or maybe a piece of fruit here and there. Um, maybe have a little bit more cheese here and there, but at that point I'm just maintaining and if I'll just add a few things back in here and there, see how it makes me feel. If I have negative side effect from it, I'll probably won't eat it anymore. It's just all about figuring it out once you've hit your goals. Um, so that's, that's my take on it, how I'm going to be moving forward once I hit my goals, because I'm getting close to it, but that's just me. But a great question, great last question for this live. Um, this was fun, brother. Yeah, definitely. It was a lot of fun. And we'll be doing this once a month. And uh, hopefully, Caitlin will be on here. And maybe we'll see about uh, doing – maybe maybe one day we'll convince Mackenzie to come on here. We'll see. And we'll do yeah, like a carnival. I'll have to put the pressure on her. Yeah. <laughs> we'll <laughs> see. Um, but, uh, yeah, this is a lot of fun. And uh, – if, if for people who don't know who Carnivore Kip is, which I don't know how you know who we are, but not Kip, but um, go check them <laughs> out. If you want to learn how to cook really good food, really good barbecue, and um, he's got he's got the information. He's a he's a barbecue master. Okay, uh, so I appreciate it, brother. And but, hey, yeah, for over. anybody watching my channel, y'all do the <laughs> same thing for him, and y'all go subscribe to his channel and tell him Kip sent you. <laughs> all right y'all we appreciate everyone with questions and chatting and thanks for the super chats and everything like that we we had a lot of fun we'll see y'all next time y'all have a good night take care y'all